Hi, I'm Lynn, and welcome to The Stitch TV. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show. What do we do here? Because we talk about <laughs> quilting, um, we chat about stuff that we like, current topics of quilting world, our that kind of stuff. Our own projects. Our own projects. <laughs> Um, our episodes come out monthly, and they're virtual sew-ins, a weekly podcast, and you can learn more about us at thestitchtvshow.com. So, what have you done this month? Well, this was funny. So, you know, apparently I'm a professional cutter. <laughs> like, I cut fabric. So, a, a friend <laughs> who owns a quilt store in the area asked me to help their big sale that you and I usually attend together. So, I actually With worked hats. the sale and cut fabric, and that's what I did last weekend. It was fun. We, it was great. You know what I did so last it's this, weekend? Yeah, what did you do? Sports ball sew-in! Woo! <laughs> okay. That was, I brought the foam finger just for that. Yes, but that team didn't play. I don't care. Okay. Like I know about sports. Yeah. I that's know. why I had a sew-in It was a Super Bowl, and they played football. You can't say that. Oh, I can't? Like, NFL copyrighted that. Now they're going to fine us. Because you said it. Because you I just got to say the Bowl? big game. Oh. Okay, I didn't realize that. But Beep. but here's what I want to tell you what happened. Okay, so I'm at the store, right? Yes. And we've become famous because I had two or three people recognize me that I didn't know. I mean, I know people in the area, so they recognize me. Yeah. But people came up to me and say, are you Lynn from the Stitch? And I went, yeah, I am. And then, this is the best part, I swear to you this happened. So a lady came up to me, and apparently we've started a movement, and she said she quit heroin for <gasps> New Year's Day, too. Amazing. I'm telling you, tell so the proud truth. of our community of quitting heroin. Oh, amazing, <laughs> exactly. We're doing so much it's good, a guys. Quilt movement, really <laughs> amazing. So, and unsolicited, this is what's really important because Pam doesn't know this, but I was told I was right about unwrapping the quilts for the presents on the back. Yes, they were like, you were totally right. Pam was wrong. It's a good thing we're talking about backs today. <laughs> but they said agreed with me. So I was like, yay. And actually, this person gave us our uh, one of our topics today. Okay. Our first topic, which is what we're going to talk about, is how do you coordinate your stash? Coordinate or organize? Organize. Oh, organize your stash. Because that is a whole lot of stuff. We're also going to talk about modern versus traditional quilting. Yes. Based on some feedback from our last episode. And as I mentioned, piecing your quilt backs. Mm. So yes. let us dive into organizing, which is like my favorite thing. I know. You were so excited about it. But they, she said, I want to know how you organize your stash. So this is for you. And Mystery quilt. Oh, I know who it is, but well, I, know I don't know who person. it is. Yeah, you don't know. Who it is. Okay. So, so how do you organize your stash? So I, let me just have a Zen moment thinking about <laughs> all the pretty rows and the colors and the sizes. So I have chunks that are about half yard or bigger mm -hmm. are folded. Okay. Uh, and I use a six inch wide ruler to fold, and then you know fold in half, and then they're stacked nicely on a bookshelf, organized by color. So you so organize by color. For big chunks. For big chunks. Well, okay. and honestly, everything else. So I have... Like, Everything's organized by color. So I have a stack of blue, I have a stack of teal, I have a stack of green. You could imagine those are the biggest stacks in my stash. And then I have a little tiny stack of orange. I know, that's <laughs> my biggest stash is orange. <laughs> so I have all these stacks by color, and there's like light neutrals and dark neutrals, and then, you know, brown, because apparently I have a lot of brown. She does. She puts brown in every quilt. Although that stack is every really quilt. gone down. I'm gonna, I've told her. I said, oh, I need this one. you're putting brown it's in brown. my quilt. Shocking. Mm. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> so you do it all by color. For the big chunks. Now, when it gets to fat quarters, yeah, they're also organized by color. I just have, like, one little basket. Just one? Just one. No, I mean, there's like a stack that high sitting on top that wouldn't fit. We're going to have to put pictures up of my stash oh, yeah. to explain it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do pictures of both our stashes so you guys yeah, can see. Yeah, so that'll be good. All right. So I organize by color, and I'm with you on that. Like, I actually wrap yardage or bigger onto mm -hmm. some, uh, I use comic book backer boards. Yes. At, um, that you can buy at comic book stores, which my husband happily goes to to pick them out for me. Um, <laughs> He's a keeper. And he is a keeper. <laughs> um, and I do that by color. Mm -hmm. um, I will also organize my fat quarters by color, and it's on wrapped on comic book backer boards, but a smaller, um, like a four by six type of size. Um, but 
I organize some things by project. So I have these, you know, 12 by 12, like scrapbook paper containers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I put projects in there. And then, so I'll put fabric in there by that project with the, with the, you know, Pattern directions rulers. and yeah, any, like sometimes if it's a specialty ruler, which I know you don't have, we'll talk about specialty <laughs> rulers later. Ooh. I have a lot of them. <laughs> so you put specialty ruler in there or, you know, if it has elastic or something, if it's for a purse or, you know, D-rings or, you know, depending on what the project is. So some of it gets organized for a project. So is that active projects like you have actively started it or is it like a one day project like one day I'll get to this <laughs> <laughs> well both like I do carry around those 12 by 12 that's how I go to like sew and yeah. stuff is I take that in a project box um but, but no there are some that have been in those boxes for five years at least five years <laughs> so your projects could go to kindergarten no and I'm... learn to write their name <laughs> yes they could go to kindergarten They'll become sentient <laughs> yes, in maybe another yes. year. That's exactly what will happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but here's what you didn't talk about. So do you have any area of your stash organization? I do separate out these, too. I separate out Christmas. Those are in a little area. Because those don't go well with yeah. other things. You know, so you need those separate. I, and I separate out um, novelty stuff. You know, like yes. food fabric. I have a lot of food fabric. <laughs> I do. I did the snack quilt for Mike. But I just have food. <laughs> well, yeah. And but sometimes the food drops food onto the on quilt them. when I'm eating. <laughs> but anyway, novelty fabrics yeah. or any kind of, you know, like really graphic little kids playing yeah. or whatever. Things that don't sort well into, into a your single color. color. Yes. yes. So I do have um, a drawer unit. Uh, and the top drawer has batiks. Because I do keep those separate. I do keep batik separate too. Not all of them. them. Some of them are. Some play with others. Yeah, they play well with others. But ones that I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with you. So you're gonna stay in this drawer and be nice. Yeah, I kind of keep batik separate because they're like more precious. They're more like. Well, they're more expensive. They're and more they expensive. feel different. And but do I do like different. mixing them in in quilts. Oh yeah, I oh, use yeah. batiks and quilts all that, and prints and modern yeah. all the time. In fact, I think that's like a challenge I give myself. Yeah. Let's see if I can. Get away with modern and whatever together. Yeah. Now I do also have a drawer below that that's novelty slash Christmas. I used to have a Christmas or slash a holiday drawer because for whatever reason I had a lot of Halloween fabric. Yeah, yeah. I bought like one huge chunk of Halloween fabric and I'm still I'm like, what are you Halloween? gonna do? With I don't. Halloween. Yeah. I don't do. <laughs> I've, I maybe got some things. No, not even Thanksgiving. It's more fall, which goes into the color. Yeah. But mine are mostly. Um, I really cut back on the Christmas fabric. I made an effort to use it up. So I have done things like gift bags because I, there's only so many Christmas quilts you need, you know? No, you need as many as possible. But I don't have that many. Everyone in my house has a Christmas quilt for their bed. And we have three that live in the living room as well. That's a lot. Do you have wall hangings? Christmas wall yeah. hangings? All right, yeah. Oh, that's right. You have Dingle. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, I love we that. showed it on the show. Yeah, we showed it on the show. Yeah, well, in fact, I have two Christmas quilts I can hang in the living room and three to use on couches and stuff. So I, yeah. I got some Christmas. You got some you know, Christmas. I'm good there. You're good. Uh, so and then I have all this extra fabric that I'm like, hey, what do I do with this? Placemats, you know, or maybe that might be next. I make tablecloths. Yeah. Like, like I'm like into making tablecloths for like all the holidays and stuff. So the, two and a half yards for my table. The problem I have. And then I buy a border two and a half yards. Yeah. Tablecloths so in my expensive house. it's expensive because it's like five yards. It's just cat toboggans, honestly, in my house. <laughs> like, I can't have a tablecloth. It's shing, right off yeah, into the dog. I like tablecloths. I made two Valentine's Day tablecloths Oh, I like them too, week. but... I and have... they look pretty. Except for Mike made me put, because it was novelty Valentine, like old Valentine novelty things. And Mike made me put the really obnoxious one on the dining room table that nobody uses. Because <laughs> he's like, that can't be on the one we eat at. Like, I'm not looking at that. I'm like, oh. So we're more inclined to do placemats because they're easier to whisk off and wash because I have kids. Kids are not neat. No, you do have to wash tablecloths. Yeah, so. Mm, yeah, there it is. All fun. right, but what the, okay, one other, anyway. the one other fabric that I separate out, and I don't know if you have these or not, but um, I'm, I work with a group of artists, mm -hmm. or one of my guilds, an artist group, and um, I've done hand dyeds. So to me, those are treated very differently than even batiks are. So I have hand-dyed fabric that's separate from 
my batiks, which suffer from my Christmas, which suffer from my, I don't know that maybe I don't, I mean, it's organized, but it's definitely, I have a lot of categories. When I started writing it down, I was like, wow, color, size of fabric, project, Christmas, novelty, batiks, hand dyes. Lynn also has an entire floor of her house yeah. that acts as a sewing wing. It's, yeah, I have it's... a room <laughs> that shares with my office for work, so. That's true. I do have a little more space. And I'm going to convert another closet for fabric storage. <laughs> so that means I can buy more fabric. It's for the awesome. record. Your husband is looking at us like, what? we're doing what now? No, huh? he already knows. He didn't look at me like that. I already know. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You think he knows. He's just like, oh, what now? I'm not looking at him right now. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, but so there's more than just chunks of fabric because I do a lot with scraps. Ugh. I know. It's not your I jam. Know. It's not my jam. It's my jam. And I got in trouble last month for something not being my jam, so I don't think I'm we're not trouble. disparaging it. <laughs> I'm, this is her not disparaging face. <laughs> <laughs> this is you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do the duck face. It wasn't a duck face. This is duck face. Oh. This is a hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome to you the know, stitch. people when they're when, when they're listening to this, they're gonna go, "What were they doing?" Well, that is incentive to them to go see the video. Yes, they should watch the video. So, what else do you storage? What else do I storage? Yeah, storage just shoes, things. <laughs> I'm not letting that go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dang <Dead> it! <laughs> you should. All right. So, tell me Don't about scrap storage. I am looking at her notes. So, tell me about scrap storage, Pam. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're like punch drunk. Whatever, go. Delightful. <laughs> so, so I mentioned fat quarters. Sometimes I have chunks fat that are quarters. fat quarter-ish. Fat eighths? Maybe not that. Like just weird chunks in between that I don't feel like cutting up smaller. But I do cut up leftover fabric from projects into usable sizes. So 10 inch squares, um, five inch, three and a half inch, two inch. And so the two inch are the most prolific as you can imagine. Those little stinkers get everywhere. I cut them up everywhere. into one and a half inch. Ugh. That's nuts. I know. It was crazy. I don't know why I did it. I don't know. I went on a spree and then made little fabric colored bins for the two inch. So I have like a bin for every color, like green, a blue, and it makes a pretty little rainbow when I lay it out in a circle and Instagram it. And then I'm like, let's shove that back on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but here's, okay. So I cut up those things because mm -hmm. you taught me how. And I was like, oh, I should be like Pam. Pam's awesome at this. I cut them up, and they go in little bins. And then they sit there. And then they sit and there. And you don't use them. And I don't use them. But they are handy for color work. I do I, I do use them. This is when I use them. I teach a color class at a local quilt shop, and I pull them all out and make the students work with them. So, yes, they're my now color workshop props. Yeah. So I guess I use them. But I cut up five and a half, or five, because mm -hmm. it's charm pack size, and two and a half, and one and a half, which is stupid. <laughs> For the record, I did not say that. But I read, but but I found this great pattern that uses the five thousand six hundred one and a half inch squares that I thought maybe we could work on. That's Bonnie Hunter, right? No. Oh, it's a different one. No, it was in um, the All People Quilt magazine. It's gorgeous. It's great. It's a. Uh, I'll have to show it to you. It's like a little trip around the world. Each block's a trip around the world. And I know the name of the block. And I can't, I think it's called Granny Squares, but I, I'm going to be wrong. Yeah, Granny and Squares are set like on point. Yes. In a quilt, because I just did one of those. Is yes. that what it looks like? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Huh? I've, but I'll have to go back and check. Ooh, and that sure. is some bias nightmare right there. Yeah, I know. Ooh. With one and a half inch pieces. We're going to go buy. That'll finish at one. We're going to go buy stock in a starch company. <laughs> We already have vodka. Just oh, that's saying. true. We've done the whole vodka thing. So, anyway, so that's what you do. Yeah. So I hope that answers our viewers' question. How yeah. do you store your? How do you organize your stash? Mine's by color and various other things apparently. But I will point pictures and maybe we'll uh -huh. draw, like lines. This is. Oh, and I have bolts. <laughs> she does. I do. A whole bunch of bolts. It's bad. I only bought a few bolts at the bolt sale, though. Like five, which is the smallest number of bolts I've ever bought at the bolt sale. So I looked. I was just, I want credit for that. 
Mr. Husband, Mike Reinhardt. I looked super enthusiastic because I was first in line, as usual. And, and she made me come stand out there in the cold. You should have worn a coat. I you knew it was coats. 30 degrees. I know. Fahrenheit. But <laughs> So I got, you know, here is my stuff. And then, you know, my mother-in-law was there too shopping. Oh, and and she got twice as much as I did. So I was helping her carry because I'm a good daughter-in-law. Yeah, she is. Who would like to inherit the fabric. <laughs> Or borrow from her stash when necessary. Yes. Uh, and so I was helping her carry, and <laughs> the people working there were like, you just bought, a, and now you're with the, oh. Uh, so I look nuts. because I'm. There like, was a friend that I had there. She was there. I got there at 8.30. She was there until I, after I left it, too. Holy moly. I know. She was still there buying. Yeah. I was like, wow. She had a whole, she had various stacks stacked up, and she was like, just do a hundred at a time, a hundred dollar stacks at a time. I don't know. I think it was, you know, there are quilters that may hide their fabric purchases from their significant others. I'm just saying, I've heard this happen. Huh. Huh. Uh, I just probably come in like, look what I bought. <laughs> if Lutzy knows, I mean, it's on the wall. So anyway. All right, so we need to go and have a tip from uh, that we have from a sewing machine company, uh, a repair company. A uh, quick tip. A, a quick tip, and then we're going to come back and talk about traditional versus modern. Okay, welcome back. Um, now we're going to talk about modern versus modern versus traditional uh, fabric and quilt styles, I guess. So uh, I was going to say I looked this up so that I could give information, but I'm also part of the Modern Quilt Guild, the National Modern Quilt Guild, as well as one here in Atlanta. And um, there are certain things that they consider to be a modern quilt, although that definition is very fluid. I would say, because everybody yes. has a different take on what modern is. But it's essentially inspired by function and the modern um, movement or modern um, design. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Uh, modern also, modern quilts also have bold colors. They're much more into bold colors, whereas traditional, maybe not as bold colors. Um, there's also high contrast in the quilts, so you'll see a high contrast. Um, graphic areas of a quilt is very much a telltale sign of a modern quilt and solid colors, really solid colors. The modern movement brought solid colors back into the market, whereas you didn't see as many solid colors, I would say, 15 years ago as you do today. It's mm -hmm. really changed that. And then um, improvisational piecing. I don't, you know, they say that and I, I keep thinking of crazy quilts. I'm like, that was improvisational. Anyway, um, improvisational piecing, minimalism is one of the things that modern quilters um, are kind of known for. Negative space, so a lot of blank space. And you're seeing a lot of heavy quilting in some of that blank space, mm -hmm. negative space. And alternative or alternate grid work. That's like what the modern quilt guild has to say that identifies modern quilt. That's what I know. <laughs> So, can I talk now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to give my interested off. face again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'll drink my water. Go ahead. Talk. Okay. <laughs> so, the reason that we wanted to talk about modern versus traditional or modern and traditional together, aka modern traditionalism, right, is that we got feedback on the last episode and I think it was inspired by the conversation we had about English paper piecing when you said that's not your jam. It's not my jam. And I love it. It's beautiful. I appraise a lot of English paper yeah. piecing. But just but because I don't do it, I don't enjoy it. Yeah, just because something's not to your taste doesn't mean that we think it's horrible. Oh yeah. You know. And and to me, I I never wanted to come across as prefer, you know, like oh, yay modern boo traditional because I, that's not me at all either no, because exactly. a lot of what I do is more traditional traditional patterns in updated fabrics because that's what that's what's available honestly yeah and I'm attracted to the bright colors shiny you know 
but I also love a lot of the colors that appear in traditional quilts. So being oh, able to meld too. those together is more what appeals to me. So please, if anyone took offense to what we said, that was not at all our intention. No, not at all. I mean, I I appreciate English paper piecing. I just don't do it well. Yeah. So, I, and and it's not something I I'm interested in in getting better at. Now I like hand piecing. Yeah, I'm good at hand piecing. She is now. She didn't. Used I was. I didn't used to be, but I I took a class and I loved it and. Yeah, I like hand piecing, but English paper piecing, I just have not gotten good at. And, yeah. And I'm not going to spend time doing it. <laughs> Or other th stuff I'd rather do. So yeah. I'm now doing the, that. The other thing to me about modern quilting is much more about how we connect as quilters and oh, yeah, not that's very what much we part make. of what modern quilting so is. So the online community, the maybe overgramming of quilts sometimes. <laughs> Check out my newest quilt Instagram, yeah. Facebook. We did. So being able to find... And not that we don't do all of that. We do. We do. Guilty. So being able to find your, your quilting tribe online. Now, we've lucked out and managed to find people, you know, In the each other yeah. by joining a modern Five guild. Five miles apart. It was crazy. Yeah. And honestly, I joined a modern guild first because that's the one that met on the weekends because I work full time. And I yeah. didn't have the luxury of just taking off on a Wednesday and going to a guild meeting. And yeah. a lot of the traditional guilds that have been around for a while oh, that's meet during it. the week. Oh, that's why I did it. I mean, I came to the Modern Quilt Guild because they met on the weekends, and I was working full-time. So, yeah, yeah, it's when you could meet with people who were interested in what you were doing. And honestly, so. I would do show and tell at the Modern Guild, and I felt like an imposter. I'm like, this isn't modern, but I made it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, well, I that's just make what I like. Yeah. So I, I think I, I, you could probably look at some of my stuff and say, it's modern. This is my quilt that I did behind, but it's very traditional, as in a traditional pattern. Um, at the same time, it, the colors, uh, well, all the fabric's tulip pink, so. Yeah. And no, it's all tulip pink. I was thinking there was cave in there. I don't think that's tulip pink. No, there may be some other stuff that's not yeah, tulip, but, but I mean, it's all modern fabric. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the Hunter Star, right? That's Hunter Star. No. What is it? What's the name of it? It's just a star. It's just a star. Yeah. But it looks like a smaller version of the, oh, Lone Star. That's Lone Star, yeah. Hunter no, Star. Sorry about Lone that. Star. Yeah, but it's a Kimberly Imo pattern who is a modern quilter who works with pre-cuts. Yeah, which... it's a pre-cut. It's from her book, um, Jelly Roll Magic. Jelly Roll Magic. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I kept thinking of the wand. Like, there's a wand on the oh the yeah. top hat on the yeah cover of the book. And pre-cuts are honestly the modern equivalent of scraps, because you get an assortment of fabrics without having to go out and buy big pieces. Now, way back when quilts were being made, they <laughs> used clothing scraps and, you know, whatever they oh, had right. around. And yeah. so being able to get pre-cuts is that modern equivalent to that. And I think that's a good point. I, I really do. I that's didn't even a good write point. that down. I she just didn't. thought of it. No, that, I mean, I think that's a good point. And I apparently collect scraps because I have tons of jelly rolls. There you go. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Well, the thing with, and I love pre-cuts, and I think if you're going to do, and we've talked about this before, but if you're going to do a quilt quick and easy, those pre-cuts are a great way to do it. Yeah. And it takes the stress out of color and making those design decisions that, you know, sometimes you don't want to make. And I enjoy that process. I mean, if you talk about my favorite process of quilting, it is the fabric selection and the colors, what's going to go together. And honestly... Like, what I'm doing now, I really think my challenge is, you know, if you say yellow quilts are hard, I'm going to make a yellow quilt, you know, because it's like, oh, well, let me just see how hard that is and let me see what I can pull in. So part of my fascination with color is just the whole challenge of how to get the fabrics looked good together. And there are some things I've done really well. And there are some quilts that are jacked up. <laughs> I they got one of those. Good. They are not good color themselves. selection. I went, and you get done, and you're like, this is bad. This is very bad. It's a good thing I'm going to use this while I'm asleep. With my <laughs> eyes closed. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> not good. So, I, I mean, I think there's a very vast difference between modern a modern quilt and a traditional quilt. But I don't know. I think as modern quilters are becoming more and more um, exposed to the traditional world or... Um, I think I think modern quilting got a bad rap in the beginning that it was all simple and it was just blocks or it was just, you know, um, straight line quilting. 
And, and I think modern quilters are, are skills are going forward mm -hmm. as they get better at quilting and, you know, aren't making just, you know, square block quilts. They're doing the feathered stars or they're doing yeah. the more difficult types patterns. And the proliferation of online classes definitely oh, helps with that gosh. because the same way that they had I mean, to find a quilting community online. We should probably talk of that as a topic. I mean, uh, Craftsy and Quilt University and I mean, I quilt. There YouTube. Are YouTube. Yeah, there are just tons of places to get, you know, information about quilting and where you can find it and stuff. I don't know. So I, I don't have a problem with traditional versus modern. I know a lot of people have questions. What's a modern quilt? I'm like, well, it's pretty fluid. Yeah. Definition, even when you look at the modern quilt world, although they really say that it's inspired by function of modern design, and that's kind of where they try to hold that line. Yeah. But I don't know. There's a lot of gray area, yeah. which is funny because their favorite fabric tends to be gray. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. A lot of modern quilts have gray. Okay. <laughs> gray area. This is gray. I think it's fun. Yeah, fun. I did. I learned a bad lesson in this quilt. It's going to be, you know, you can't see where it's jacked up. So you learned a bad lesson. Does that well, mean no, I learned a lesson that <laughs> I will never do again because it was a bad experience. Ah, you know that. So like, all right. So I I was gonna do this quilt for a show. <laughs> it was gonna be a show quilt. So I was really spending a lot of time quilting it, and really detailed in the quilting and stuff. And Pam <laughs> wanted to use my long arm. So this quilt had been on the long arm. I take a long time to quilt quilts. This quilt would be on the long arm for a while. And she's like, I really need to get this quilt done. So I thought, and never do this. I thought I could just nail down the edges, the borders of the quilt, take it off my long arm and put it back on. Well, because on a long arm, you should start at the top and quilt all the way down. If you get to the bottom um, of my quilt. Bubbles. It had major gappage. Oh dear. Uh, so I didn't realize that. No, you, you didn't. told me no, girl. You can't use my long arm. I'm using it. No, I don't I remember what because I told you I needed to. I don't even I remember told what you, you could use it. And I felt bad because I didn't oh. get it done. So. Girl, just tell me no next time. So, anyway, <laughs> so, but it taught me a great lesson. I will never do that again. Okay. I will just take it off. I will not try to do the borders like I did, and it's double padded. So I was like, dang. It's a lot of quilts. Oh, there's nuggets. And then, it, but but you didn't know you'd screwed it up until you got to the bottom. You were like, oh, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So it's got gampage. It's all good. It was my fault. What yours? <laughs> so anyway, that's my jacked up quilt. But you can't tell unless you look at the bottom. And we'll take pictures and show you how bad it is. It's not bad. It, I truly, it's not. Unless you're looking for it, I've it's done not worse. Bad. <laughs> I can top that. <laughs> but it's just one of those things you're like, ah, oh, crud. Yeah, I mean, you make those mistakes. Oh, yeah. Like, I know better. I should have known better. Mm -hmm. And yet you're like, no, it'll work this time. That'll quilt out. <laughs> no, it's not quilting out. And it doesn't. Rats. <laughs> anyway. So. All right. So. Do we have another tip? We do have another tip. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. We are now going to talk about potentially another area of modern quilting. <laughs> Peace backs. <laughs> so, okay, not everybody's going to get that though. So we'll you have to explain why, or do you want me to explain? You can explain why, and then okay, I'll talk over so, the Okay, <laughs> so someone on the internet somewhere in the modern quilt world put, how can you tell if, there's, if it's modern quilt is that it has a pieced back? And that would be a telltale sign of a modern quilt. Well, they made this announcement in the modern quilt meeting that I was at, and I went, wait a minute. <laughs> I appraise quilts, and I'm pretty sure we've been doing piece back since the beginning. So <laughs> that's not a telltale sign. So it became a running joke in our guild that if you had a piece back, that you would turn it around on the other and go, hey, it's modern, it's pieced. <laughs> but it's not really. So anyway. It is. So, <laughs> but I piece a lot of facts. Mm, I'm 50-50, probably. 
Well, I piece bags out of necessity, um, mostly because a lot of my fabric stash isn't in large continuous chunks, and I like to work from my stash and not my fabric, last weekend being an exception. Uh, <laughs> like, that's an excuse. Oh, I need backing. Let's go to the store. So there are times when I will. And then you can buy other things. I'm just saying. Go ahead. There are other times what? That I can talk. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, a lot of, because I talked about having stash organized and by color and all that. And a lot of times what I've done is try to make the back interesting. I agree. And not jacked up because I have done both. It is interesting in a very jacked up way. <laughs> like, oh, glad this is the back. <laughs> Nobody will look at it. <laughs> but I also know it speaks to my little engineer jigsaw puzzle solving brain to be able to fit all these things together. Oh, it drives me nuts. Yeah. It's not for everyone. <laughs> No. But honestly, if you have like two big old chunks of fabric that you stitch together, that's a piece back. True, it is. That is. But the, I'm talking about like the jigsaw puzzle of like, ooh. Yeah, I have one I probably need help and... with. So okay. I may, because we did this panel challenge. And so my idea was, because I have a lot of tops over there, that I would take all these panels that I bought that are Christmas panels and put them together to be the back of a Christmas quilt that was really a nice Christmas quilt. And I couldn't figure out how to get them all in there and they look right. And anyway, I got frustrated with it. So I have half a back. Just one cheek. <laughs> half a back piece <laughs> with these panels. And then I haven't finished that Christmas quilt because I'm like, oh. <laughs> so maybe I should let you look at that. It'll be fun. So it would be fun for me. It's torture for her. I'm like, it is mm, torture. Puzzle. Like my piece back is, is two fabrics. Mm -hmm. So if you need nine yards, I buy four and a half yards of each fabric. And then I cut them in half. And so I have a big four patch yes. on the back. And that's my piece back. I, that's as pieced as you're going to get. <laughs> that's it. But usually the center of that four patch kind of gets oh, yeah. off center because oh, of the way, because I quilt on a long arm. So I don't center it into that piece back, which if you want a back centered, you really Ooh. need to talk to your long arm quilter to make sure because you're giving them extra fabric on the top and extra fabric on the bottom. And l l really they want eight inches, four inches on each side. So eight inches um, on each on eight inches wider, eight inches long, and wider, eight inches wide. Yes. Yeah. Now I will say the hazard of piece backs is that your long armor may not be a fan because that is more seams. It is, and yeah. they need to be pressed very well. Now I yes. have also, and she read... presses her as well because I do quilt her quilts, and oh, okay. they're I don't Yay. have problems with them. But I will say. Um, when you piece, do you use a quarter inch seam allowance on the back or do you use a bigger one, like a half inch? Quarter. Okay. I've done both. I, I didn't even think you, well, I guess I didn't think about it, but I've always used quarter. I didn't, I guess I didn't think that you should use a half inch. Well, so when I was first started quilting somewhere on the internet, it was like, oh, when you piece your, you know, your back together, even if you're just using two fabrics, use a bigger seam allowance and well, press it open and make sure it's super flat. Like, no, don't press it open. Press to the side. Yeah. If you press it open, you'll have a hole. <laughs> yeah, well, because all you've got is the thread holding those two pieces of fabric together. And if you press it open, and I, as a quilter, even if you're domestic quilting it, but as a long armor, you've got tension mm -hmm. pulling that and tension pulling this way, and it's pulling those things apart, and you drop a needle right in between that. It doesn't have anything yeah, to, to, grab go, onto. to grab onto except for that bat batting, which is going to poke out. Yeah. Yeah, no, don't press them open. You always want to press them back to one side or the other. I do know that. Well, there you go. We've all learned something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it's a big deal. A lot of quilters, I mean, this is a trend to press seams open. And there are times that I agree you should press seams open, but you got to think about that whole mm -hmm. dropping those needles in between those seams and stuff and it. I don't know. Particularly I, if you're stitching in the ditch yeah. on a quilt top. Oh, if, press oh, the side. you got to press to the side. Press the side. Okay. Yes. Be very judicious when you press open. But back to the backs. Oh, back to the backs. Back to the backs. It's like back to the future, which is already over. Because we've already had back to the future day. It was last year. Hmm. Anyway, October 25th? 
was, I think. Oh, yeah. nerd power. Nerd. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> back to the backs. Back to the backs. So a lot of um, the donation quilts that I do end up with piece backs because I'm mm -hmm. using chunks of fabric. And one tip that I've done, because our kind of recommended size was maybe a 45 by 60 inch quilt. Yes. So fabric usually comes in 42 inches wide, which yes. is smaller than 45. That's a pro tip for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you hate that because you're just like oh, three inches rats. Well, and then whatever extra you want, because I don't long arm all my quilts. But for one that size, I'll do no, my And when she gives me one that she wasn't planning to long arm, I like call her tell. up and go in. You didn't give me any room. <laughs> I know. But what I do then, because I have those 10 inch scraps already pre cut, I just pick out mm, about six or so maybe seven, depending on how long it needs to be, um, that coordinate with the back fabric or with the front and then just sew those into a strip, make a big old slice in the width of fabric and just make a little inset thing. That's a good idea. I know. I and like then that idea. if you get one that's a solid color, that oh, can I be your label. Can... Oh, that was one of my questions. So one of my questions is, do you put the label in the piece back or not? It depends. On? It depends on? Everything. <laughs> uh, so it depends on, on price, vegs, and china. If I remember, <laughs> okay. uh, is the big thing. <laughs> Did I remember to, to make a label, label ahead of time? <laughs> so it doesn't bother you if, because if you put the label in a piece back, mm -hmm. then it's going to get quilted. Yes, it is. That's a, I mean, to me, that's a consequence of. Yeah. And you're okay with that. I'm like okay with that. Like sometimes I want the labels to be yeah. not sewn That's over. That's one of the things it would depend on then. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, like wanna... if it is a quilt that I know is going to be used potentially to make a quilt fort, then like you the label in. needs to be integrated into the back. Yes. Now, I, you always need to label. That's not even a question. You should always have a label on it. Yeah. <laughs> you should always have a label. You should. And I say this and I'm... Sitting here thinking, I wonder if there's a label on the back of this quilt I hanging behind us. There's not. <laughs> I'm thinking there's not. But you should always have a label, really. You should. Do as we say. Yes, exactly. Such a mom statement. Because to I said ignore so. Ignore the thing that I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, because I said so. So that doesn't matter. Okay, so as a quilt appraiser, um, anytime that you have a piece back or like blocks in the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, leftover blocks. Leftover blocks in the back. Um, we would refer to that in the appraisal as back art. Didn't that sound fancy? I thought it sounded fancy. Back art. Back art. So to take that a little further, for an extra dash of fun All right. on a bed quilt, Yes. at the top of the quilts, do a row of blocks. So when you turn down the bed to get in, you get a little fun peek of the back with some little extra design jazz. Oh, that's a good idea. Isn't it, though? Yes. I've never but... done that, but I thought of it and thought that would be a good idea. Okay, but if you're going to do that, <laughs> if you're going to do that with a long armor, yes. make sure you're yes. inside that four inch. Yeah, that you're not going to accidentally yeah. be binding over it or cutting it off when you yeah, yeah, exactly. That's so for my... sure. But I so, would say. But that's a good idea. Yeah, I like that idea. Fun thing. Yeah. Except for, you know, let's be honest, I don't ever turn my clothes down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would be great. Man, that would be good for, like, guest bedroom that you're more, you Fanciness, know, fancy yes. about. Not the one that the cat's going to get up and sneeze on yeah. in my house. <laughs> like, you know, the guest, oh, I've done this. So you put a little basket in the guest bedroom with water bottles and stuff. and We don't have guests in my house. Oh, I do. So I put a little basket and I'll put, like, water mm -hmm. bottles in it, people are saying. Except for Mike's parents who come all the time, so... I have kind of not been as good. <laughs> they, I did when we first moved in, and yeah. then, you know. Yeah, we just ran out of bedrooms because I kept making people, so. <laughs> I'm done making people, but apparently <laughs> there's no also done making bedrooms, so. <laughs> you didn't make the bedrooms to begin with. Well, so we have, like, the one weird bedroom that kind of branches off our room, so if we wanted, like, creepy next-door neighbor guests, they could stay in that little 10-foot square room. Ooh. I know. That's, yeah, that ooh. sounds like creepy next-door neighbor guests. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway all right is there anything else about these you know, packs I, honestly just have fun with it and don't be freaked out and worst case just sew together some big chunks and stick them in the middle of a big piece of fabric i do like that idea of splitting it and mm -hmm. that's a great idea hmm. make sure I you will... press well 
Yes. You know? Especially because if you're using a big chunk of fabric yes. that has the crease in it. Mm. That crease is the bane of my existence. Yes. If you don't pay attention, you can have strips that go like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I've done that. And how do I know? I've done that. Oh, lesson anyway, learned. <laughs> lesson learned. All right. This month's show is brought to you by 77 Peaches Enterprises, your one-stop shop for creative support. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches, Big Think Productions, Cotton Art Studio, and Hip to Be a Square for being part of The Stitch. You can find their links to their sites on our show site, thestitchtvshow.com. And that's all we've got for this episode. If you've enjoyed the show, please like us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and share it with all your friends. Remember, our next virtual sew-in is going to be Friday, March 18th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast on our channel here on YouTube and mm -hmm. on the stitchtvshow.com. My podcast, Hip to be a Square, will be out every Friday, including now audio version of the show. Right. And you can email us with any questions or comments, and we will talk about them on air at info at the stitchtvshow.com. All those details and more can be found on our website, the, the stitchtvshow.com. Stitch so tune in next month for more quilting chat with friends. <laughs>